thank you guys for joining me in this new video on my journey on building a two-dimensional game engine in C++ using the SDL library. So if this is your first time guys watching this video series and uh, you don't know what I'm talking about, so I started this project on building a two-dimensional game engine. The result right now is what you're seeing on the screen, so I'm still working on it, I haven't finished it. And the idea is to be able to share this with you when I finished it. So I'm gonna start a video series where I explain how I build this step by step so that you guys can also learn from my experience but I'm now talking about this because I also want to learn from you and I also want to let you know where I why I'm actually on my project right now so that you guys could know when maybe things are coming out so now in this video um, I'm gonna be talking about the player class that I implemented you can see the player here is able to run um, it's able to attack my jump is still broken now. It's it's ugly, but I'm gonna work on that. So, in the previous video, I talked about the object object class. So I talked about the inheritance system I created on my object. On top, I had an interface which was object, and I created a child class from that which was object two D. And on the bottom of that, I also create an object two D rigid for all those objects which which are affected with the gravity and uh, you know with those objects with speed and velocity and I want to present a special um, class of those object of those rigid object which is the player now my player class is right now still on working stage I haven't finished it I'm still working on the jump and you know all trans transition between also those states and um, I'm actually thinking about to build a state machine which is gonna handle the state of the player whenever it jumps, whenever it's running or attacking and all that kind of stuff but I'm still thinking on that and it's not so simple but I'm really enjoying it so my player class is right here it inherit from the rigid so it's a rigid body so to say it's, it, it's affected by the velocity by the gravity and stuff even though I haven't implemented my gravity right now but you understand now since this guy inherit from this rigid as I said in the previous video he has to implement this tree method right here that's why we define them the draw update and clean now we also have some function for the state of the player I'm not even sure yet if I am going to be using this or if I'm simply gonna hard code it but I think it's gonna be clean if I use this but I'm still thinking so I'm working on that right now so yeah, the player is actually um, can run, jump, fall, can be hurt, can die, and attack. Those are the states I want for my player. And I need to figure out, for example, when the player is able to jump. Because when the player is jumping, he's not able to jump anymore. That's why I need a state machine which can handle that. When the player is falling, I want the spread sheet to be another spread sheet when the player is hurting. That's why you can see here, when he's running, it's something else. No, when he's attacking, it's something else. And that's the same thing. So I want to handle this, but I haven't figured out now exactly how this is going to be. But I'm still working on it. And I have this set state function, which simply take, we have this state here, this enum boolean here, which in which I define all the state of the player, jumping, falling, hurting, attacking, dying, idling, whatever. And we also define this enum here because we want to know is this is the player facing right the right side or the left side that's why we define that one and yeah we define we define some uh, private member which which are important like the texture ID of the player we want to know uh, which texture the, the player should take right now so if you remember my texture my texture manager class I read all my texture so let me show you that uh, sorry texture right here the C++ file now <clears throat> if you see the init here we have a lot of texture for the player I didn't have only one spreadsheet for the player I had different images different spreadsheet for each state for run I have a spreadsheet for fall for hurt that's why I had to load them all with IDs that's why my player need to have a private member which is the texture ID the actual texture ID he need to use to use to be able to render because when I push for example move this button right here 
then the texture ID get changed and this set state is the guy doing that he changed the state by saying okay now running the texture ID is the run texture ID the number of frames that that uh, that uh, spreadsheet has it's important because we want to look through those frames and yeah the delta time is also to make the the animation you know but I don't actually have to you know use it like that but I chose to use it like that and I define a constant up here which is you know 120 this is the time between all those things but we're coming to that and uh, the rest is just normal stuff like SDL flip row frame number of frame can jump key is already those are stuff I'm still working on it I don't want to get deep in that right now because I'm not sure if those are gonna be you know in, in, in the next videos and stuff because I'm probably gonna be changing that now as you know our class need to implement a lot of methods that I define in the other side so we have the constructor which start by defining the the row of the spreadsheet because our pairs start with the idle, idle state so the row is one and the frame is the first frame we start by the first frame and we move forward I could have left this but you know it's important just just wanted to make like that he's facing right and the flip is also defined by the property you remember this property class and we also need to define we also have this last safe position this is important when the player dies for example and we want to resurrect it in in the place where he can restart playing but this is not important for now can jump is now for fault on fault in the beginning what could have been true but doesn't matter set state like I said it's simply you know take the texture ID the state that it's gonna be set it and um, yeah and that's it there's nothing special in this function this is a setter draw we simply use our texture ma uh, our texture manager right here because it's only one instance we call it and we call it draw frame because the player has many frames we could have used draw but draw is not for animated it's not for spreadsheet but we decided to use draw frame because it has a lot of frames and we want to loop through those frames and draw them on the screen that's why we we use this draw frame right here and we also call the rigid draw function there is nothing written there right now but just wanted to make that because you know in case I change something over there I don't have to come here and update it the player update function is simple we just check which we, we have the input handler right here which is on top and bottom here we check if the player push something like move forward jump or attack we handle that here by setting the state so if you push this button we set the state by on running and we set the, the number of frame and here we just check the state and we call the, the function that uh, goes with that state and yeah we know the the, the, the cinematic formal of uh, object in movement we have position is equal to position plus velocity I could have multiplied it with the delta time yeah, to make things more consistent but for now I just leave it like that and that's that's it and yeah the input as I said it's just checking we I'm gonna be explaining the the event handler class in the coming video so we just check which button was pushed and then we we set the state and uh, we also have this jump run we haven't set a lot there we still I'm still working on that that's why I just I don't want to get deep into that so we have the velocity set X we set the velocity on the X axis on 2 and it's gonna be multiplied by the direction whenever I push the button for example D the direction is gonna be set to right and if you remember I define it with minus 1 for left and 1 for right so we just multiply the velocity by minus 1 and it's gonna flip the player in the other direction and I didn't have to you know redefine to uh, uh, these things twice I just wanted to use this and it make, make makes it easy so and uh, the jump function I'm still working on that so that's why I'm gonna be letting you guys with this so thank you again guys for following along and watching this um, I'm just giving you some little idea about this maybe I I am doing something wrong right here you could share with me what you think because I still also uh, need to figure out a lot of things and if you guys can help me then it's it's welcome so thank you again thank you for subscribing and 
yeah as i said you can support me on patreon the link it's right here on the screen and yeah have a nice day or a nice night or whatever ciao